Okay, everyone, like I promised, we're going to go over if, uh, else if, and else. And so this is just a simple way, you know, to, to choose between things. I have x is equal to 1, and z is equal to 2. And let's just write a simple if statement to begin. So let's do if, and we'll choose x is equal to equal to, which you have to use two equals to test. One is an assignment. And so let's just, you know, test if it, if it works when it's equal to what it is. And we'll just have a, a little print statement. Correct. Okay. And let's test it. And as you can see, it works. The test is, uh, is correct. And so if you want to do more than one thing, you have to add brackets, just like in a function, really. You can see I can put that in there. And let's just test it. And it, it still works. OK, so let's add something else. Let's just do an assignment. You know, x is equal to 2. And actually, when we run this, we won't see anything different. But you can see it's actually doing two things. So let's do a, a print statement in there just to show that it's doing both things. And let's run this. OK, correct, see? Now, what if we wanted to do a little bit more? There's an else if, and the truth is uh, the else if, uh, the difference between just that and doing a different if statement is if the first one is successful, the second one won't even run. It won't even test, I should say. So let's do else if z is equal to 2, which is true. And I'll just uh, do one print statement. This should not print, as it shouldn't. Even though z is equal to 2, it won't print. And so that's because if the first test passes, then the second one will not actually even be tested. And so let's just demonstrate that. If the first one fails, then the second one will be uh, printed, or run, I should say. The test will be, you know, carried out, and if it passes, then it will uh, do what it's supposed to do. And if I have neither of them, then just nothing happens. And so let's uh, look at some other, uh, you know, uh, things to compare. There's less than, it's, in fact, it's less than 3, in which it is. It does print and doesn't even run the second test. In fact, it's greater than 3. Well, now you can see, you know, nothing happens. If I change that bottom one to actually be correct, z is less than 5, then the second one prints. OK, so, you know, that's a pretty simple demonstration. And um, another thing to look at is what about the else if? You know, if, if, if I do z is equal to 5 and I do an else, this is for just else, and I'm going to do a print statement here. Else doesn't have to have, or shouldn't have, a test in it. It's just something to run if nothing passes the test. This is the final straw. And let's see if that works. And you can see none of these are, are valid tests. And so the last one actually, you know, executes, because there is no test there. It's just what runs if nothing passes the test. Okay, so with else if and else, you have to do the same thing if you want to do two things. You have to have brackets. And I can put a second little print statement in here, just to show that, you know, the brackets will, will encompass, whatever is encompassed in the brackets, I should say, uh, both of those things will run. And I'll put a few spaces so it doesn't look so terrible. Okay, let's test this out. This is the final straw because I don't have a valid test. So let's make that valid first. Now let's demonstrate that it works. Okay, and so you can see it does both print statements. Okay, so with the else, it's the same deal where you would use brackets. And let's just take that and put it in there. And, you know, let's just copy this print statement and use that as our uh, 
as our second thing. And let's look at it. I better change this. And you can see both things print. So that's kind of an overlook of how if, else, if, and else works. But let's add them some things to the if statement here. If x is equal to, equal to 1. And I'm going to do an, an and statement. This is a, an and test, I should say. So I'm testing now if both of these are true. And um, oops, I forgot the second equals there. You always have to have that. Else, as you can see, it just won't work at all. And so you can see that it passes both tests. But let's let's change, the, you know, what if it doesn't pass both tests and does one? So it has to pass both with and. And it gets, you know, goes down to the else because it didn't pass. You know, even though one did pass, the other didn't. What if we did an or? Now we have one that's untrue and one that is. And with the or, it just has to have one working. So that's the difference between, difference between and and or. You know, they're, they're uh, pretty useful when it comes to different things in programming. Now, I can do something like this, where I'm testing if either two things are correct or one thing is. And so, the one thing that is correct still works, even though I'm testing two on the left side that fail. That, that or there is the thing that kind of sets me free and allows me to pass the test you know, without all of that other stuff, you know, being invalid. And so let's do something a little bit different. Let's just do three and. So now these all have to be correct. And as you can see, it doesn't pass. And so let's do something a little bit different. For those that don't know, uh, this is a pointer. And uh, I'm just going to set this to null. And so one thing you might not know is if you try to look at a null pointer, the program will crash. And you don't want your program to crash, but we're going to kind of look at it, you know, just for teaching purposes. So in this one, what if I did this is going to be valid, z is equal to 2, and that's valid as well. But let's put an or in there. And let's change it to that pointer. And I'm, I'm going to have to dereference it, of course. So you would think this would crash because it, it, you know we're looking at a null pointer. But it doesn't. And the reason for that is because it passes the first test. And therefore, the thing on the right is never tested. It just goes ahead and you know, moves on. And what if it fails? Then it does test the thing on the right. And so, you know, regardless uh, of the fact that, you know, we, we failed one test, uh, it's, it's going to crash when it gets to the second. And uh, let's change it up a little bit. Let's take this and put it on the left side. Okay, we've got that. So now it's going to test this first no matter what. So even though this second, is, this second test is valid and, and could get us through, it's going to look at the first one first. And as you can see, it crashes. This is something that's pretty important when you're writing programs that you know you want to have things in the right order in your if statements. Uh, if you don't do something like that, uh, if you I should say, you know, look at things that are dangerous before you verify them, then what you might end up with is a program that crashes even though it doesn't have to. And so I think this pretty much sums up if. Uh, I hope this helps and have a good night. Music Studio.